Yeah. Or we could to start. Yeah, I believe so. We are live now. Okay. All right. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning or good evening in case you're joining us from any. my presentation. Zephyr, if you can kindly confirm. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So let's start uh, sessions. Uh, this is all about the uh, one version we'll be talking about. So before we start, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Atif. I'm the Vice President, Solution and Services, Mazzi Global. We are the Microsoft Gold Partners. Um, so, career as a coder on uh, the C++ and then move into the uh, implementations and then move into the dynamics uh, back in 2000. And then since then, I'm managing and delivering the uh, programs and in the multiple and different industry. Currently, I'm empowering and supporting our customers in their journey on the digital transformations. Um, they are using or being on the Dynamics 365. Um, other than uh, the profile, also actively involved in Uh, connect and learn and share our experiences and the knowledge. Uh, I'm married, happily married, I would say, uh, with two kids uh, who keeps me busy when I'm not on sitting on the computer. So it's uh, another project which I need to run. Um, uh, along with that, obviously, on the keeping the like and. Um, obviously uh, spending time with friends and family that's what i love to do in my time so that's me Josefa. so hello everyone this is Josefa Butler. uh i'm currently servicing uh serving as a service delivery manager uh, within mesic global uk uh, i have got uh, more than seven years of experience within dynamics technologies uh, that involves delivering uh, the dynamic solution as well as leading the offshore teams and then I have got experience in working uh, within different regions of the world. So I have de delivered solutions uh, as a functional consultant uh, within UAE, within Saudi Arabia and currently uh, I'm working for Mesic Global UK. So I have uh, got, I have been actively involved in the uh, community as well as I have been managing my day-to-day -day routine. So uh, on a side note, uh, I love traveling as part of my professional career. I have been privileged to travel quite a lot. So that's all about me. Thank you, Zafa. So we can't move any further without saying our big thanks uh, to all the sponsors who has supported this event. Uh, so that's include calling out their name specifically. So Skip Runner, DQ Global, Proximo, uh, Respire, Agilisys, and Hitachi, as well as Microsoft, obviously, without their help and all the support they have provided throughout, this event wasn't possible. So thank you, and we look forward for uh, further and your ongoing support. And uh, also, a uh, big thanks to all the organizers uh, along with uh, all volunteers who have been working very, very hard. I know how difficult it is to run these events. Uh, it's required a lot of time and your commitment, which you could spend with your families and friends, uh, but you have dedicated and committed to this community. So thank you very much. Uh, so let's start uh, on the uh, topic, actually. It's uh, one version. So before we start, uh, I don't know how can I see how many end users we got in the room uh, and how many consultant or partner 
So it's virtual, so obviously difficult to see. Uh, so let's assume we got the mix of all the people here and users and the consultant and partner. So I'll keep my discussions covering both area. Uh, in the end, we all need to deliver, and this is what uh, we'll be talking about, how to deliver and uh, maintain our solution on the Dynamics 365 um, platform. So either you have completed your journey or you're on your journey of the digital transformation on this uh, Dynamics 365, or maybe you are planning, you have already started migrating from the on-prem to uh, cloud solution D365. So good news is uh, you have already taken the big step. You have already done it and you are now streamlining your business processes and your operation. So that's a big thing. Now next, what you need to do it. So you have now, you are coming or you will be very soon on the platform. So what you need to do uh, next to maintain it. So you need to start thinking about your planning and understanding how you will be maintaining your platform. And if you are using any customized solutions, any software ISV, how you will be maintaining this one, what you need to do. So this one version is all about uh, discussing how you, what you should be doing it, what sort of activity you need to do. So we'll talk about that. So, so uh, I would say another uh, comparison, we can do it from our uh, real life examples. So assume it that you have a baby, there's a newborn baby, uh, you got it. Now you think the once the baby is born, the big task is done, everything sorted. You can crack on with your other activities. No, that's literally just a start. So you need to think about how you will be looking after your baby. You will be committed and you will be taking your care of rest of your life. So in this case, obviously, when you have a solution, you are on the platform. So you will continue looking after with the solutions on the platform with all the updates and everything. So that's the thinking and the planning you need to do it. So what Microsoft has been doing it throughout, why Microsoft is doing this? Previously, Microsoft was giving the opportunity to have the releases available and people had the options to escape it and carry on with the legacy old versions. And then you end up having uh, issues or had a lot of uh, investment to upgrade it. This time, Microsoft is supporting. So what they are doing it to accelerate all those business which are moving into the digital transformation, they are moving onto the platform. Microsoft is continuously enhancing. They are investing, massively investing on this platform D365 with all the, uh, to add more features, to add more capabilities. Every day there are some new features coming up. So Microsoft is continuously updating it. Now once have they have done it and they are regularly updating it, how you as a partner or the end user will be getting all those updates. So what Microsoft observed uh, prior to the D365 or when we were on our early journey of the D365, then maintaining it as a previously we were doing it at AX, it will be very cost effective, uh, uh, very expensive. So what Microsoft decided back in 2018, I think June or July 2018, Microsoft announced a way, a change where they could uh, deliver all these updates differently. That would help you to stay current in a consistent, predictable, and a seamless manner. That was Microsoft's intent. So with one version, uh, what uh, customers will be benefiting, customer will be on the same version with access to the latest available capability and no one is stuck on the older version. So you have, so most of the time, all the key customers, all the people who are on the platform will have all the key features and up-to-date version available on their environment. So customer also experience continuous updates. They will not have the expensive upgrade. So these new updates can then aim to lower uh, update cost. Uh, obviously, because you are regularly updating it, you don't have to uh, invest 
a lot of time to do the code merging, then the testing, all those bits, because you are regularly updating it. So that would help you to reduce that cost and also the support, because uh, if you are having, as a customer, we are experiencing any sort of an issue, so Microsoft can easily help us to uh, rectify all those issues, because it's easy to have the one platform where they can compare all those issues with the other customers as well, and as well as all the features they have it. So it's easy for the maintenance point of view. So that's the, that's the topic we'll be covering it, and this is all about the one version we will be discussing in our next uh, 30 to 40 minutes. I, I would just, yeah, I would just like to add one more thing over here. Uh, like Atif has correctively, uh, correctly mentioned that it helped the customers to be on on a uh, specific uh, update within specific time period, but it also helps Microsoft to uh, support their customers. But because previously uh, within different time frames, uh, different customers were on different builds, and it was very difficult for Microsoft to to support their customers as uh, and they were following the hotfix uh, pattern to deliver uh, the patches on, on, on to different customers. So with one version, it is helping customers as well as Microsoft to be on a similar kind of builds and uh, similar kind of uh, uh, versions. Exactly. Thanks, so Zafar. So, so let's carry on with uh, what other features or the points we need to consider when we are talking about all these service updates or one version releases. So what will be happening? What we will be getting from these uh, updates? So first of all, the very critical, um, I think everyone needs to understand, are we going to have these as a backward compatible? Because we may have the customization, we have our existing features running on the platform. We don't want something new coming up and breaking all those existing features. So yes, all these ad, uh, um, updates will be backward compatible. So your apps and the customization will continue to work post-update. So it's not going to break down. It's very, very important. When you have a live system running and you are updating with the platform, it should continue to work. So Microsoft is making sure this is backward compatible. And any new feature, which uh, where we think they are the major or any sort of uh, user experiences are changing. So all those features are actually part of the major releases. We will talk about the timelines when we are getting the major releases and then uh, other quality updates uh, in our next slides. But uh, assume if there are some changes where we have the uh, major changes on the interfaces or people will get uh some uh, will find some differences so those feature will be turned off by default so that's mean even though you are taking the updates all those new changes new feature will not be uh, available right away you need to it will allow administrator or your one version team testing team to first test it making sure you are fully ready in your test environment uh, your end users are happy then you turn on into the production environment so those feature will be off. Now, backward compatibility, uh, there are two parts, uh, I would say. One is from the functional side, which is around the interfaces. And then other part is around the binary releases, which we get it. So what is the binary releases? Binary compatibility means you can apply an update on any runtime environment without needing to recompile, reconfigure, or redeploy any sort of a customization. So you can just deploy it, and your solution will continue to work. So from both perspective, interfaces and the binary, it will be backward compatible. Now talk about previous releases on the AX side. AX, when we were uh, using the AX different version prior to 2012, customer had the options to skip as many as much as they wanted. So they were they had options to pick and choose whatever they wanted to have it in their environment, and it was obviously becoming a pain for the end user as well as for the Microsoft. And this is where, as we said, one version came into the picture. But in this case, so with one version, when you are getting the updates, it will be always continuous cumulative updates. So which ensure you have everything uh, what Microsoft included and released to date, so you can confidently say that you have all the features, all the capabilities of the platform, what we and Microsoft and release it, is it all available in your environment? And uh, they have been tested. 
So all the releases you will have it is will be all cumulative changes or everything will be there. The third point is uh, we have to follow the standard practice that every release will be coming from the testing cycle. So you, you as an end user will be testing it. You will have the opportunity to test into the UAT environment before it gets updated into the production. So obviously, there are some uh, time periods which you, you need to follow. Uh, so that practices needs to be in place. However, you will have the opportunity to test it in the UAT. Uh, and all those changes will be available in the UAT prior to the production gets out to update. And the last one, uh, obviously, when we talk about the releases, the key things for the Microsoft quality is always at the forefront for what Microsoft is delivering. So Microsoft, uh, previously, they have been giving this opportunity, and they will continue to offer this early validation during the development cycle uh, uh, activity. So that would be the release validation program. So you, uh, as a partners and the end users, you get uh, registers uh, with the Microsoft, and they will provide you all those early releases through the insider program for the FinOps and the CE. And you can get those services available. You can apply those changes into your environment, test it, and you can work closely with Microsoft to give your feedback and all those issues which you may have find out and there will be other customers who will be participating it's not for everyone but there will be limited uh participant uh who will be working through this program because that's required the registration process and everything so you will be working giving your feedback and ensuring and that would allow microsoft to ensure that whatever they release as a general availability it is stable and it works for most of the users and that's the intent providing the, these validation program. OK, so that, that, that's all about the all version. When we are talking about the key features and what key consideration they we uh, Microsoft is following it. So if I will go into my next slide, the uh, FinOps. Uh, so these are the uh, few points which and from the timeline point of view, uh, we can find out from the Microsoft uh, website as well. But uh, uh, I have compiled it here, so I will quickly run through uh, what uh, you will be considering it when we are talking about the one version. For your uh, customers or as an end users, you need to consider for your environments or solution. So how you as a customers are in control of your environment if Microsoft is continuously releasing uh, the new updates? So first of all, you will configure what and when you want to update your environments. So it's not like Microsoft is just releasing and every time you need to do it. So from the feedbacks and all those activities Microsoft has performed since uh, July 2018, they ha have been keep improving all those processes. So currently, Microsoft are providing eight service update per year. And I'm especially there are two processes uh, and slightly different to CE, but we have it in the FinOps. So just uh, I'm currently I'm focusing on the FinOps, and then in next uh, few slides we'll cover the CE part as well. Okay, um, so eight services update per year. So that's mean. Uh, so you will have uh, I don't know if you can see the screen here. So March, June, and September and December. Microsoft will not be providing any sort of a updates here, any service updates. So we'll have the releases uh, from the January, February, April, May, July, August, October, and November. And in this release, we have a major one is in April, and the second one in is October. OK? So what does it mean by major, uh, which uh, is happening in the April and October? In April and October releases, Microsoft actually releasing the new features. So it will allow you to consider if you are looking for any new feature, all those new features will be part of April and October release. Rest of the service updates will be focusing on the improvement. 
either it could be the performance improvement or it could be the security improvements all those will be part of the remaining service updates as a end users if we talk about do i need to take it all the updates every time no based on the customer feedback microsoft is allowing customer to pause up to the three consecutive updates so that's mean if you are taking the release for example in april then you have a options to pause may july and august releases and then you can take it october one okay so you have a option so this mean if you say uh, that we can uh, we take the april one then we take the october one then you have again another three releases which you can escape and you are back on the april one so this way as a uh, customers as the uh, end users you have to have minimum two updates per year okay uh microsoft will continue to update uh, i think uh, i'm not sure how we'll be taking the questions we'll pick up in the end if that's okay um um Ozefa, if you can keep an eye on the chat because i'm sure. on the presentation screen so on the uh, servicing side so microsoft now allowing customers or they will be supporting customers to support their current version or the last version of the current one so n n minus one so that's the feature that uh, facility they have provided so customers while they are pausing it there will be situation where customer is on the last version and they are having some sort of issues so they can get the support from microsoft Microsoft is allowing and giving customers enough time to do the testing. So as part of the early access, uh, there's a preview. You as a end users or the partners, you have a facility or the options to have those releases available in your environment, in non-fraud environment where you can continue your testing, give your feedback and ensure you're fully ready and pre pre uh, prepared for the production uh, release. And any, any, and if we talk about the major releases uh, in April and October, which is the 12 month, so any sort of a feature which is going to be removed, so all the depreciation from the existing solution or, or the releases, Microsoft will give uh, at least a 12 months notice. So you as a partners and the end user will have 12 months to make your solution ready and update it based on the changes happening because those changes will impact your solution once they have been removed. So as a solution provider or as the ISV, whoever is sitting and listening this presentation, you need to prep for that. Microsoft further invested in the R set. Uh, it's, a, it's strong advice to use it for your ongoing your regression testing because it's a regular update so using the R set you can make and save a lot of time there and you can make your testing very smooth and ensure that you are continuously keeping an eye on the stability of your solution and the last point here it is all about the opt-in to enable new features as I said the April and the October while they will be there could be some depreciation there will be new features which will not be turn on they will be all turned off by default until as an administrator ad, administrator you turn them on and you are fully ready so advice is again uh, in a preview you will test those in the environments in the sandbox you get your things ready you do your end user ready and then you enable it into the production environment okay so i will just move on to the timeline here what's happening uh, and when we are expecting all these predictions, um, or what Microsoft is saying on the continuous updates. So if you'll see, uh, we got the dates from the 2020, which has gone. So if you'll see here, the February one, which is now actually, so we got the platform 17 now available. So Microsoft even now have removed these numbers as well. So we have to carry on with this uh, versioning. So 17 is the uh, latest one, which is now available as a preview. So you as uh, end users or the partners uh, can download these, update your environment, start your testing. So you have almost six weeks or so 
to get yourself uh, ready tested before the journal availability is uh, they are available as a journal uh, generally for everyone where we Microsoft gives at least two weeks for you uh, if you want to self update it and from that point Microsoft based on the region it will start auto update based on your LCS setting so, uh, as a solution we do configure so based on your geography and all the geolocations everything Microsoft is regularly updating once it is being updated as the uh, it is available as a generally right so from March 19 you will have this platform available if you want to update your production environment it will be available if you don't do it automatically it will be updated from April 2 okay um, and then if you talk about I will just briefly touch on the end of service what does it mean so if you'll see uh, against each releases the patches you have an end of services dates available what does it mean from that date Microsoft will not be able to support if you are coming across with any issue and you are on that particular version so after June is 11 if you are on the platform 17 you are experiencing any sort of an issue and you need Microsoft support to look into it what they may ask you is go and get the latest version first try to reproduce if you are still experiencing the issue if you are then come back and we'll look into it otherwise from that point of uh, from uh, that point uh, onward they won't be able to support or investigate so this is um, about the end of services okay hope that's making sense uh, and obviously you can always contact me later on uh, if you need any further discussion on detail so I'll just carry on okay so what if you as a partner or uh, end user specifically want don't want to have the certain releases because of the regularity because of any other reason or you are in the middle of something you decided and Microsoft is giving facility to pause three consecutive uh, 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 updates so you have the opportunity to delay it and I will show you in the some screenshot I put it together as well so you can see where it needs it it can be done so assume it you are on the platform 14 as a customer you can pause 15 16 17 but 17 one you can either uh, self update it two weeks before the auto updates or it will be automatically updated based on your LCS setting you have no options to skip this one obviously if there is any situation where you are for certain reason you need to speak to Microsoft so there will be some exception where you can you need to speak to Microsoft directly and based on the discussions and agreement they may let you skip another one but bottom line is you cannot just carry on forever okay um, then uh, if you will see here uh, Microsoft uh, how you will be updating it you can get all those information from the this uh, link uh, available on the uh, Microsoft website so you can get more detail there and if I'll go into the next slide, it's the screenshot. I don't know if you can read it. Uzefa, do you want to, do you mind if you can? Yeah, so okay. basically, uh, yeah, I will explain the process of uh, pausing the updates. Like Atif has correctly mentioned that we can pause up to the three updates, but it really depends on, on the organizational strategy and, uh, and the plan to take on these updates. So if we talk specifically about pausing and seeing how we can uh, see the next cadence, uh, next in line cadence, and what is going to come uh, this month or the next month, we can update all of those settings via our LCS project. So if you see over here, it's very small. I'm not sure if you all can see it here, but uh, if you go to your LCS project and if you go to your uh, update settings, you have got uh, the dates over here, like uh, Atif is uh, pointing to the update settings. And if you see on the right, you have got some uh, dates here where you will know that uh, you the versions you are currently on and the next versions which are in line to be updated and deployed on your environments so Atif like uh, uh, he mentioned in previous slides that uh, it's a, it is the Microsoft strategy to 
update the sandbox environments uh, or the UAT environment, whatever you call it, the sandbox environments needs to be updated first two weeks before, uh, and then uh, Microsoft automatically applies that uh, update on a production environment. Now, it really depends on, on the organization if they want to uh, follow that strategy uh, by updating the sandbox environment two weeks before and, and then deploying it on the production. That's the automated method. But we have this capability where we can skip this automatic process and we can uh, take the updates on the sandbox environment or the UAT environment first, and then we can deploy that uh, or take or deploy or take that uh, platform update for the production environment manually. It, it will skip the automatic process. So these are the configurations and the settings which we can do via the LCS. And I'm emphasizing again on the organizational strategy. It really depends on, on the organization, uh, how they want to update their environments. Uh, so Microsoft suggests that we follow this automated process and we, uh, we are always in line with our uh, versions and uh, Microsoft updates so that we can uh, follow this uh, monthly or uh, uh, monthly cadence for the one version updates. So if you see here, if you want to skip any of these updates, like Atif mentioned, we can skip up to the three updates. If you uh, turn on this uh, uh, button, uh, which is currently set as no, but if you turn it on, it will skip the, uh, it will stop the uh, or pause the updates and then you will be able to see the calendar if you uh, it will show you another button which will show you the calendar in and, and in that calendar you can see that which update you have paused and uh, like atif mentioned we can pause up to the three updates and this uh, lcs will also tell you that uh, these three versions are paused and system will automatically take the fourth or the third one which is in line uh, that will be deployed automatically after uh, its due date so these are the configuration which we can do, which we can uh, handle. And uh, like Atif rightly mentioned, it is uh, we as a customer or a partner are in control of our environments. And it depends on us how we want to take these updates. But Microsoft, as per Microsoft recommendation, they always suggest customers to uh, follow and do their complete regression testing using the automated tools on UAT environment and then follow this cadence and deploy uh, these one version updates on their production. Brilliant. So that was all about the FinOps, uh, the, what exactly happening. So as I said, the FinOps uh, one version process is slightly different or the timeline is slightly different to what we have it uh, in the CE. So what I'll do in the next slide, I will quickly cover what was happening around the CE site. Um, so this is a slide I believe you can still um, see. So again, like uh, FinOps, uh, where we are having a major releases in April and October. So in CE, that's uh, still the case. So, so similarly, we will be getting the major releases uh, in April and October. It's normally called wave one and wave two. Um, so wave one will be in April and then wave two will be in October. Um, they will be all backward compatible like uh, the FinOps uh, service updates as well. Uh, so people with the previous version and if they have a solutions, they will be able to carry on running it as it was after their updates. New features with major and disruptive changes, as I said previously, uh, which is impacting the user experience, will be off in CE as well by default but you will have the options to turn it on if you are fully prepared. Uh, and when we talk about the major releases, so in addition to the major releases, Microsoft will continue to update and deploy regular performance and reliability improvement updates. So that's the quality updates we say it, it will be regularly updated. So sometime even it's the weekly updates Microsoft is releasing in the CE side. Release notes are normally available three months prior to the major updates. So you will have the opportunity to understand what is coming in the upcoming releases. And then it will be all available uh, as a preview uh, uh, for you to do the testing in the sandbox, in the non-prod environment. And then based on uh, 
the, your configuration region deployments, it will be automatically updates uh, for the CE and so on. Okay, so if I will go into the next slide uh, from the timeline point of view, um, I was searching on the website. I still can't see the what are the dates at the moment for Wave Two. So that's I have input it, but normally uh, based on the next slide, I can mention. Uh, I have already mentioned what was in the last year, so you can assume it in uh, that would be around the similar timeline. You will be getting the Wave Two, but for Wave One. Uh, it's already available. Uh, the release plan was available January 27, and then it is already available as a early access for all the partners or end users. So people can start testing, and uh, we are already testing for some of our customers. So from February onwards, and then it will be all started rolling out and updating as the auto update from the 2nd April 2021. So that would company continue and that would be uh, spread it over few months to be based on the different configurations and the region uh end user will be getting the update throughout few months uh before the wave 2 release gets up here so let me see if i got this screen so this is the old um, screenshot i had it so as you'll see here the last time the early access was available from february 2020 then it was auto rollout, the wave one updates from the April until September. So it was continuously happening based on the region. But in August 2020, they uh, announced the release, the early access for the wave two. So people and the partner and user can start preparing themselves for their, with their testing and everything. And uh, from August, it will say August, September, two months. And then from October onwards until March, they had the options to carry on with their auto updates in the CE site. Okay, so if I will show you on the screen, so that one maybe you want to quickly yeah. walk through and I'll let sure. you carry on. Sure, uh, so like Atif has mentioned, we have got two waves. Uh, so wave one and wave two, and those waves are, uh, uh, kind of uh, different for CE and Finanox, and we know that uh, we can we have two major updates in a wave uh, for CE, and then we have got eight updates uh, for the Finanox. But uh, we as we have seen previously on the LCS, we have got the option uh, to pause the updates, and then we have the option to choose which update we want to take, and we can uh, then plan our uh, the rollout rollout on the production environments. In the same way. Uh, Microsoft is providing us the capability uh, on the Power Platform Admin Center to take on the uh, CE release, which is obviously a major release in April and October. So, it, for, uh, for example, uh, if we talk about uh, 2021 release wave one, we have uh, the preview re uh, available release available now at the moment. As Atif mentioned in February, it was made available, and we have this option now. To uh, download that release, uh, we can use Power Platform Admin Center, go to our sandbox or production environment. We can uh, click on this manage button, and then we have got this option to update our environments. So uh, it normally it does not uh, update the version ID. It's re it really depends on the what what is there in the release, and sometimes it does update the version IDs, but sometimes it does not update the version ID. So you do not need to worry about it if it is. Uh, update is installed and your version IDs are not changed. So uh, it really depends. So you can go and click on these updates and then uh, download this uh, uh, major update and then do your testing and then plan a rollout on the production. So again, it is uh, and uh, Microsoft is giving an opportunity to the customers to plan ahead and uh, plan the rollout on the production environment because the release, release notes are already available three months before the release is going to happen and then we have got this peep release available where we can download this release and in in complex uh, like structures or if, if you have multiple environments for example if you have integrations we, you have a ce and finanops environment working in the same organization then it it gives you sufficient time to do your testing plan out uh, the uh, uat testing with the end users and then obviously when when the time comes you have to take the up, update 
and uh, deploy it according to the regional deployment timelines. Okay, thank you. All right. So while we have talked about all this uh, FinOps and the CE one version releases, that how often we'll be getting it and what you as a partner or a, as an end user need to do to maintain the environment. At the same time, if you're the partners or the ISV who got the solution uh, built in on top of the D365, so if an as uh, platform is being updated, you as an ISV will need to ensure that your product is being updated as well. And it is fully compatible with the version what Microsoft is uh, releasing as part of the ongoing improvement. As Microsoft uh, heavily investing on this enhancement and adding the new capability, you as an ISV will need to ensure that you are re regularly updating these products. So as part of the activity, and I'll let uh, Uzefa carry on in the next yeah. slide. Uh, so uh, just let me complete Uzefa, I'll get, uh, hand over to, to you. So as part of the ongoing activity, when we are getting the early release, and as uh, Microsoft is giving partners opportunity to have all those early releases available. So you as an ISV can check and test your product. And if there are any sort of a feature either being decommissions and depreciate or they are adding new features which you want to enhance in any product, you have the luxury and you have a uh, flexibility to add those features. You can make sure your product is working with those uh, new releases as well. Even despite if you uh, don't want to add or you have no plan or roadmap to add any new feature at this point, but you want to ensure that your product is working with the latest updates if because customer may want to update their environment. So you need to just make sure so you are aligning your activities along with those um, uh, releases in uh, with the Microsoft. So you need to get all those updates uh, into the test environment. You test your solutions into that uh, in those sandbox and once verified you can deploy it into the other environment and you can obviously engage with the customers to do the end to end testing as well before it gets updated into the production so zephyr do you want to just quickly run through this slide uh, i think it's quite interesting one to yep. uh, don't worry about this lot of small boxes it's a different flow. Uh, we have put it together, but to Zafa, over to you if you yeah. can. Take sure, I, I will run quickly because we, I think we have just three minutes left. So uh, basically, it really depends whether uh, if you are an ISV and uh, whether your ISV is related into FinnOps environment or CE environment. So if you, uh, and in both cases, either it is a CE related ISV or it's a FinnOps related ISV, you need to make sure that all of your uh, uh, ops or CE updates uh, are in line with your ISV because, uh, for example, you have got eight platform updates on ops and you have got two major updates on CE. So you need to plan the rollout and the testing. So uh, if uh, like Atif was showing that we need to make sure that our base product uh, and within the ISV, it really depends whether your customer is using your base product or they have got their own enhancements on top of your isv so it becomes a very complex structure so in in all cases it really depends that uh, you have to take all of these updates make sure that your base product is in line with the uh, platform updates uh, if it is on a FinnOps environment you need to make sure that all of the platform updates uh, are uh, compatible with the uh, base product with the isv and you need to make sure that you have tested it on your uh, the the platform update on your base product, and then you if there are any customer specific enhancements that you have done on your base product, then definitely you need to then test the complete uh, update package uh, along with your base product and the customer related enhancements, and then you need to roll out that uh, uh, updates on on the customer. So, and if it's the same for the CE as well, like. Uh, that if you are if you have like two major updates within a year and then you need you have got more time to test that particular major release on your base ISV product and if you have customer specific enhancements then you have to test 
uh, the one version update on onto this, those specific enhancements, and then you need to plan the UAT testing, and then you need to plan out uh, plan the rollout on the production. So we uh, uh, in this example we have uh, we have provided an example where an ISV is relating to the both C and FinnOps environment. So it becomes a very interesting uh, diagram that you have to uh, basically plan out the releases, and uh, you have to. Uh, make sure that the base product is compatible, then customer specific updates are compatible, and then you are uh, planning the rollout of the one version update on the UAT, and then you are planning the rollout on the production environment. So it, it is very important for an ISV to make sure that all of the platform updates are tested on, on the sandbox environment first, base product, and then they, we have to plan it out on the production. So. Uh, I am going through a bit quickly because uh, we have got uh, uh, we have got some less time. So there, in this slide, uh, like uh, we can see over here that we have we can maintain different branches for our uh, uh, base product. Then we have got CI/CD. That means we have got customer specific enhancements, and then we have got uh, maybe we would have uh, got some. Other uh, things going on, we can have multiple branches, and this is uh, Microsoft uh, product. So we have got this capability, we have got this luxury to maintain separate branches for our different code structures. And then obviously we are managing our builds via the Azure pipelines, via DevOps. So as soon as uh, we have to, uh, we have tested our base product, we, we can have one uh, separate branch for the uh, base product, then we have got one separate branch for the continuous in, uh, improvements and continuous developments, and then maybe we can have a separate branch which which is relating to an ISV or uh, which uh, and on the top of ISV we have got some customer specific uh, enhancements. So we need to merge all those. We need to test them separately. We need to merge them all into one product package, and then. We need to plan a rollout uh, for the UAT testing, and if you see over here that we can do continuous, uh, we can plan the UAT testing with the customer, and then eventually once this all process has been done, we need to uh, plan the rollout on the production. Either it is a pin and ops update or a CE update. One very important point to uh, uh, to uh, keep in mind in this particular slide is to make sure that your customer testing is uh, is sufficient because the updates are really important and like atif mentioned some of them uh, within FinnOps, they do not get updated or enabled automatically you need to make sure that if there are any processes or customer specific enhancements which are coming as part of the one version update they are properly tested and then if it is rolled out to the production it is uh, then uh, enabled on the production environment so if we can see over here in this slide that uh, how we can plan the rollout of the one version updates on our environment so we can see if the peep release is available we can see that uh, okay let's take the peep release and apply it on the dev environment once you have uh, updated your uh, one dev environment which is the uh, development environment you need to make sure that there are no code conflicts there is no nothing that is really uh, causing issue with the uh, ISV or the customer specific enhancements and uh, uh, customer specific improvements once it is tested in a dev environment then you need to move the code to the test environment where a test environment can be a sandbox environment or, or a cloud hosted environment so on this test environment you as a partner you need to make sure that your product is fully tested uh, before you provide that update to the customer for their testing and then uh, in in this uh, process, you can use your branches as uh, as was shown in the previous slide. And once you have done your testing, you need to uh, plan uh, a rollout on the UAT environment so that the customer can engage their end users for their end-to-end -end UAT testing. And once it has been tested, all bugs or conflicts are resolved. Uh, on There might be a case that you, you don't find anything specific in your own testing. but Customer might, uh, might find something which is specific to one particular process. Uh, they can report some bugs. You, you need to fix those bugs. And ultimately, you have to plan a rollout on your production environment. So it involves a lot of human resources and, 
and the environments. Okay, we are nearly over time. So just give us two minutes and then we'll wrap this one up. So, so as you can see, there are a lot of activities happening um, related with the one version because of the regular updates coming up. So the recommendation uh, as per uh, the and that's recommendation based on our experience. So obviously, as we have dealt with a lot of customers uh, and what we have seen it. So I think recommendation would be to have a separate uh, evergreen support team uh, and that would should include the functional resources uh, from both FinOps and CE side based on uh, depending on the solution you have it for your customers. Uh, you have to have the technical consultant. You have to have your automation and manual testers who can regularly and as we go along with the number of releases, they can review the release note. They can access to the test environment. We can they, they can run through the their functionalities and the overall solution and ensure the system is working. And if there are any sort of a variation, they can go through the overall testing as well. Uh, along with that, they we recommend to have the center of excellence team who can review the business and that should be there should be representation from the business areas. Uh, so SMEs from business areas as well. Um, and from the technical side, we recommend to have the architect team. So these two, it, it doesn't have to be so many people in each area, but the representation from each this area, depending on your uh, solution size uh, and how big is the organization you're currently deploying the solution, you need to have those sort of people available to support this ongoing activity. Uh, I guess that's where we cover all the points. We have it. I can't see any question at the moment. Is there any question anyone wants to ask? Please feel free to message now or we have already provided our contact details. Um, so feel free to reach us out through the email or LinkedIn. We should be able to respond and support or help really where you need it. Any questions, anything? No, I don't see any questions in the chat group. So, so either, either we have explained well or we have done the bad job. So yes. we'll, uh, when you get chance, please feel free to leave your feedbacks on the session that would be really, really useful. If there is no questions, um, thank you all for your uh, attendance and joining us our session. Um, and as I said, feel free to contact us should you have any query and enjoy the rest of the day really. Uh, we are all learning from each other. So great day and great more sessions to attend. Thank you all. Thanks everyone.